listening to the David Dean Coaches Show. One, oh, three. One, two, three. On Rock 108. Welcome to the David Dean Coaches Show, live from Austin's Cattle Company. Thank you to Solstice Lab Partners, formerly Doctors Laboratory Incorporated of Valdosta, for sponsoring the VSU Blazing Brigade Pep Band tonight. Also, thank you to all of our sponsors, Southeastern Federal Credit Union, Peaceway Counseling and Mediation, KFC, Budweiser, Griner Nissan, Gerard & Jewelers, Blanton & Griffin Insurance, Valdosta Lighting, Smitty's Package Store, and Georgia Print Co. And now let's take it to David Schmidt and head coach David Dean. It was a week without Blazer football, but we'll be back at it on Saturday against uh, the, a decent game coming up, uh, arch rival of sorts, of all things. But, you know, everybody was asking me, the first thing they really wanted to know was, how did your trick-or-treating go? Did you get a good haul? <laughs> I did get a good haul. Uh, I uh, was able to get there right after they started, and uh, I don't know how many houses we hit, but we hit we hit several, and I walked around with a kitty cat and a zombie uh, cheerleader, and uh, we had a few other friends that were walking around with us, but we had a great time. It was a lot of fun. And how important was that? You know, you had a couple rough games, and to be able to separate and and get to shut that down for a, for a time, and and do something completely away from football. Well, it was a lot of fun uh, to to be able to get away and, and get away from football and get out of the office. You know, after I leave here, I go back to the office, and uh, we uh, we work until the wee hours of the morning I usually get home about 12:30 or so on Monday evening and uh, for to be able to get away and just walk around with with them and and uh, enjoy trick or treat and it was a lot of fun until somebody asked me about uh, North Alabama the <laughs> two weeks and uh, then I you know then my mind goes back to football again but uh, it was it quickly it went back to to where where it needed to be and it was it was with uh, with Natalie and Allison as we, as we walked around. And that's one of the hard things, I would think. You know, you as much as you tried to get away or can separate, and even off off season, everybody knows you as the coach. So they approach you as the coach, and I'm sure they have conversations <laughs> as you represent the coach. I'm, I would think that the ratio of questions about North Alabama outweighed your questions about what you thought of, you know, the consolidation or thank some goodness, other, <laughs> some other, or who's your know, mayor or something right. along that lines. Well, it's, uh, you know, I, I'm not, uh, I, I don't look at uh, the uh, TV news very much, don't read the paper very much, don't have a lot of time to do that, so I'm not caught up on current events. Uh, anything that, that I that I get, I usually get from uh, friends, family, uh, other coaches that may have heard things, uh, so I'm kind of out of the loop on things that go, so... Uh, you know, people look at me and say, uh, you know, the, you, the only thing you know about is football, and a lot of that's true. But uh, there are some other things that, that I do know. But, uh, you know, this time of the year, uh, football is about the only thing that I know. I hate to, sad to say I could hear one laugh out of the whole crowd, and it came from your wife. So I think that confirms what you're saying. <laughs> um, you guys, again, you kind of split up the week where you, you spent some time doing some preparation. You took a little bit more time off on the weekend. How did that go before this week started? Well, it went very good. Uh, we we had a good week of practice. We practiced Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and we had what's called our Turkey Bowl, which is our JV team scrimmage to our red shirts, and our red shirts ended up winning 14 to 7, uh, which was a great day. And then, uh, just on a side note, our JV team played their last JV game today. They went down to Jacksonville University and played this afternoon at three o'clock, and uh, they won their last game, 21 to 14, over Jacksonville University. So, really excited about that. Uh, so they're on their way back up right now, up 75. But uh, we practiced Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We gave our kids Friday and Saturday off, and then we came back last night and we had our, our first true UNA practice last night. We worked a little bit on North Alabama. Wednesday and Thursday, uh, it was about a half and half practice, a lot of fundamental special teams, and then we started introducing a little bit of North Alabama on Thursday and Friday. I mean, excuse me, Wednesday and Thursday. Now, is that an opportunity to work on special teams that you don't otherwise get because you're so focused on the offensive defense? Well, we, we take a lot of pride in our special teams and work them extremely hard. 
We have been struggling with our, our PAT field goal team, so we took a lot of time and put some extra work into our, our PAT field goals, hopefully to, to help Daniel uh, kind of get his confidence back. Daniel's a very good kicker right now, but it's, it's, if you're familiar with golf, right now he's just got the pulls. And uh, he has been kicking much better, and, and hopefully when he gets in the game, he's going to be kicking uh, the way he has been kicking in practice the last couple of days. I know one of the things you've spoken about in the past, and it always holds true, is you got such a big game coming up, not, not only opponent-wise, and again, regardless of records, that would be a big game, but also the, the playoff repercussions that appear to be on the line, the way things, the way the regional rankings are set up, and we'll talk about that uh, as we go through the night. But... Um, it would seem like you know you were able to kind of get a gauge of not getting them up too quickly, and you don't want them to peak on Thursday, no. but get a sense of where they were Sunday after having a few days off and seeing if they were mentally prepared, if they came back in in such a way that you could tell that they were still focused on football at the same time able to separate for those days off. Well, there's no question, and, and the big thing for us is, is we played nine straight games, plus we had five straight weeks of of what we call our camp, you know, the early preseason camp. So our kids went 14 straight weeks of football, and, uh, you know, they they were ready to get away from coaches for a while. They were ready to get away from football and kind of go see family, go see friends, go to their high school games and different things like that. So that's that's why we thought it was important for those guys to get away and kind of recharge their battery. And uh, whenever you're away from, from people or, or away from – uh, what you enjoy doing for a couple of days, you're, you're, you're excited about coming back. And I could see that last night. Our guys were really excited about coming back. And it was funny. And right as we started our stretching period, when Coach Dosher started our stretching period, you could hear a lot of guys talking about UNA week. This is UNA week. So I knew then that, that our guys were excited about getting back and getting ready to to go into um, preparation uh, for what is going to end up being a, a huge, huge, Huge football game on Saturday. You know, you talked about it in the games. You know, offensively, you're able, you've been able to score touchdowns, and unfortunately, it's too soon. And again, the preparation, you know, it's that same thing. What have you learned from past experiences that kind of helps guide you through a week like that? That again, you're getting them kind of excited about it and talking about it, right? But at the same time, you know, not getting so much that they burn all their fuel too soon. Well, and, and that's what I told them early in the week. I said, we can't play the game this week. You can't get so keyed up that. By the time you get to Saturday, it's a letdown. And, and believe it or not, you can really do that. You get so excited about playing, you've just exhausted all of your energy towards the game. So we can't do that. We've got to slowly build uh, and, and kind of at 2 o'clock have a crescendo of, of, of emotion and energy and passion and all that that we need to take out onto the field. So uh, it's hard to do because you know what's at stake. You know, it, it, I mean, it's it's no joke. There's nobody in Valdosta, Georgia, if you're a Valdosta State University fan, that likes North Alabama. It doesn't matter what you're doing, you do not like North Alabama. So our guys that are in our program understand that, and and they have to they have to slowly build towards that that energy and, and emotion release at two o'clock. So that's the one thing that I really talk to our guys a lot about. Don't don't play it so early, and, and let's let's concentrate on what our assignment is, doing our job, playing together, and not worry about the consequences of what happens if we win. Let's just go out and play the game like we know how to play and do our job. And that's another one of those situations that's always kind of changing because in college football you're rotating the roster regardless of people staying around. I mean, it's, it's, it's built in that you lose them after five years one way or the other, four years in many cases. And so you have a young team, so it's a little bit different this year in, in doing that preparation, even though you may have been through it. Right. That doesn't automatically translate to this group of players having been through it. So obviously the seniors stepping up here and kind of taking, have you seen the, the people taking the leadership that needs to, and has that played a role already? I really have. I've seen a lot of the guys that have been around here for a long time kind of step up and, and talk a, a little bit about what needs to be done and, and uh, you know, refocusing and, and let's, let's put the past behind us. You know, with us having such a young football team, I would have loved to, have, after about the fifth or sixth game, had our off week and, and let our guys get away and then come back and then make a run down the stretch. But that's not the way the schedule worked out. It ended up being in the tenth week of the season. Um, that was the, the hand that was dealt to us, so we had to, to use that. 
but you could kind of tell it, it kind of wore on a lot of the the, the newer players, out, so to speak, because we are playing with a lot of freshmen and we're playing with a lot of redshirt freshmen that really this is their first season of, of going through college football and the demands of college football. And football's tough enough as it is, but sometimes you forget these guys go to class, they go to study hall. You know, there, there's a lot of demands that we put on these football players as well. They they have to take 15 hours a week of class, but then they also have to have some of them four or five hours of study hall. You know, and so that that's a lot of lot of work that goes in, and it it sometimes it's emotionally draining. And then you on top of that, you you put the the number of times three times a week you go in the weight room just to maintain that, that you keep your body and your strength and your flexibility. And then you put on top of that practice. It's very draining. You don't you don't do that when you're in high school. You don't have those demands on you like you do when you go to college. And what about players that are players or I'm sorry, people that have played before that are still around campus. Is that is that a resource that you can use? Do you have to be careful about them? You know, kind of getting too worked up because you have guys kind of say, and you got to do it for all of us. <laughs> I mean, it seems like it has to add a lot of extra pressure to it, but at the same time, it is a resource, to, again, to, to give you some informal guidance for people that have been through it. Well, it is, and there's a lot of guys that when you when you see a lot of players come back and, and, and they want these players now to uphold their traditions that they have set before them, and, uh, you know, we had a guy that came in to the office this week that, that I have not seen in a long time, and uh, it was good to see him, and he was kind of one of those guys that said, uh, coach, you know, I know I know what they're going through because we're struggling right now. And it was Larry Dean. Larry Dean stopped by the office, came in my office, and sat down for about 30 minutes or so. And we talked about the NFL and how he's doing. And you know, he was saying it's totally different <laughs> what what I'm going Especially through. Especially at the Division Two level. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, he said it's totally different. You know, and he just said. You know, just tell the guys this and tell the guys this. And he's still a big fan of ours. So we get a lot of guys that are like that that call and, and say, you know, Coach, keep, tell them to keep their heads up. They're playing good. You know, with, hey, you've had some bad calls go against you or you've been right there. You've made made some plays that, that you don't normally make or you missed some plays that you would normally make. So you always hear that. But I don't know about our guys around campus seeing former players. They probably do. Uh, and that does add pressure to that, uh, but that's that's part of college football. There's always pressures of college football. Everybody wants you to win. That's and, and I won't say just college football. It's high school football too. And, and any any level of football that you play, there's pressures that are are put on you because of of everybody wants to win, and they're behind you, uh, win or tie. And there are no more ties in college football, so they're behind you when you win. But they always are criticizing you when you lose. And of course, the opposite of that is, if no one cared, that would that would be even worse. Sure. Because then you don't you're not passing on a tradition. You're not building up a program that people can get behind and right and get proud of. Well, I tell you that the most amazing thing that I've seen is if you go around our campus right now, there are signs everywhere that are red and black that say "Beat UNA." There's I bet there's 15 of them around our our field house out there, and I don't know who's responsible for doing all that, but you know somebody cares enough. To, to go through the trouble of making all those signs, putting all those signs out, putting ads in the paper. Somebody cares enough for us to beat North Alabama. And our kids see that. They realize that. And that's an exciting thing to them. But, again, it's like you talk about. It's always the pressure because they know that they're playing for a lot of people, not just our football team. They're playing for an institution and they're playing for a community. I was going to ask you about that, and it's interesting that you were not directly involved in that. I was driving through. I had some other people mention driving through this morning and going by the baseball field was when I first saw them and seeing the beat UNA, and I'm thinking, this is college football. This is a nice thing to see. What was your reaction to it, and did you hear any players talking about it specifically? I have, I have not heard any of the players talk about it yet. Uh, I did. The only thing that I did hear was a couple of them asked when they came to practice last night, uh, they, they said, have you seen the sign out front? And uh, it was either last night or this morning. My days all run together. I don't remember. But anyway, they were asking, have you seen this sign out front? And, of course, I hadn't seen it at that time. And uh, that was the first mention that I had heard of any of them about it. And then when we went out on the practice field Sunday night, there were signs up on the fence that had, you know, there was about four or five of them that had beat UNA right up there on the top. 
So that's a huge reminder. So I know our guys see that, and, and, and believe me, they're excited about it. Um, they know what's at stake. They can't wait for Saturday to get here. And again, we've got to control our emotions until that time. But for whoever's involved in that, uh, you know, I, I know John Crawford is probably involved in it. Rick Sisler's involved in it. I think Sheldon Hurst uh, back here in the back is, is involved in it as always. Uh, you know, those are all guys that are true supporters of ours. And I think, you know, Whit Chapel's Whit, another one. You know, Whit's in always involved in things like that. So, you know, we're excited about it. And, and we appreciate everybody um, putting the interest in and, and realizing how big a football game this is for our players. And if you have yesterday's paper, there was a nice full-page color ad that had the same thing in there. So if you still have that paper hanging around at the house, check that out and rip it out, maybe bring it to the game and kind of hold up your sign. Or I know uh, Neil Culbreth mentioned that he might want to get one of those signs and wear it as some bling to the game to kind of <laughs> really stress the point. Well, I am really pushing. Um, the, our game is at 2 o'clock. And ESPN, or C, I think it's CBS, has picked up the Auburn-Georgia game at 3.30. So I've really pushed. You know, they're, they're trying to get a huge crowd, and I think that's why they're doing all these signs and banners and all this kind of stuff. And I said, well, if we're going to do that, let's move it up to 12 o'clock. We'll be through by 3.30, and everybody can go watch the mm-hmm. game. But I, I think it's falling on deaf ears right now. Well, well, we'll take our first break when we come back. It's funny you say that because they've had some other people that want to move the time up too for prior obligations. But I'm for I, don't know, I don't know what kind of power. And I, and they I have, have none. They asked I'm me to pass it along, and I have <laughs> no power. We'll take our first break. When we come back, we'll talk more about the big game coming up Saturday against North Alabama. <laughs> We'll be back with more from the David Dean Coaches Show live from Austin's Cattle Company. Thank you to our title sponsor, Southeastern Federal Credit Union. Also thank you to Peaceway Counseling and Mediation, KFC, Budweiser, Griner Nissan, Girardin Jewelers, Blanton and Griffin Insurance, Valdosta Lighting, Smitty's Package Store, Georgia Print Co. We'll be back with more right here on Rock 108. There is absolutely nothing better than Friday night football in South Georgia. Don't you love it? Some of the nation's most elite players crashing helmets and blitzing the field to utterly, totally dominate their opponent is so relaxing. The sight and sound of tens of thousands of rabid fans screaming with every snap will rumble your soul. And don't even get me started on those power ballads during the halftime show. Man, it doesn't get any better. And to all of the opposing teams and their visiting fans, we love you, but you're going down. This is what we do, and this is how we roll. Tradition is here, and the future is now. It's Friday night football, folks. The trumpets are sounding, the air is thick, and victory is just four guaranteed action-packed quarters away. Brought to you by Southeastern Federal Credit Union, a very proud sponsor of South Georgia football. It's a world of endless meetings, a place where the copiers always jamming and cubicle dwellers always dream of better digs. Yeah, this is the typical American office, and come 5 o'clock, this is America's beer, Budweiser. It's brewed with the finest natural ingredients for the perfect combination of flavor and refreshment. Budweiser, the great American style lager. Budweiser beer, Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. Please drink responsibly. Hey, what do you have? Ah, it's the what'll you have moment. You want a light beer, right? But you also want real beer taste. Michelob Ultra. Smooth, refreshing, perfect taste. 95 calories and 2.6 grams of carbs. That's the smart choice. So what will you have? Yeah, a round of Michelob Ultra. Mick Ultra, you got it. Live life to the ultra. Please drink responsibly. 2009 Anheuser-Busch Incorporated Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. 95 calories, 2.6 grams carbs, 0.6 grams protein, and 0 grams fat for 12 ounces. Shopaholics and people who hate shopping have one thing in common. Neither likes to shop for insurance. At Grange Insurance, we get that. That's why we recommend buying through independent agents. Let Blanton and Griffin do the shopping for you. Blanton and Griffin will look at a variety of insurance companies and recommend only the best ones. Companies like Grange, who offer great value and exceptional claim service. Call Blanton and Griffin today at 247-6500. Products not available in all states. 
Accuracy, reliability, perfection. Exacting standards and passionate faithfulness are at the core of the legendary Tag Heuer watch collection. These standards beat strong in the hearts of every football player and diehard fan. Champions of accuracy, champions of quality. Tag Heuer's and Gerard and Jewelers winning team can't be beat. Gerard and Jewelers, our area's exclusive dealer of Tag Heuer timepieces, proudly supports Coach David Dean and the Valdosta State Blazers. See the rebirth of an icon. The Tag Heuer Link series exclusively available at Gerard and Jewelers. Listen up, it's the David Dean Coaches Show on Rock 108. Welcome back to the David Dean Coaches Show, live from Austin's Cattle Company. Thank you to our title sponsors, Southeastern Federal Credit Union, Peaceway Counseling and Mediation, KFC, Budweiser, Griner Nissan, Gerard and Jewelers, Blanton and Griffin Insurance, Valdosta Lighting, Smitty's Package Store, and Georgia Print Co. Now let's go back to David Schmidt and head coach David Dean. You mentioned about changing the time approach before the, before the show. Uh, regular attendee Mickey Williams was mentioning that his daughter and her fiance, I guess, for some reason did not consult the schedule before they planned a wedding, oh. which I, I don't know what happened there. Not passing judgment. Not passing judgment. But it's their wedding's at 5.30, so they're in the same dilemma of trying to attend both and get well, some pictures and all that other stuff. Well, then what, we, need, what we, need to move it. we need to move it then, for, you know, so everybody can get to the wedding. And we got the vice president of everything on campus here, Rob Kellner here. He can probably get it done. Yeah. Rob, what are you doing about yeah, it? Right. What are you doing about it? Um, and again, I know that's that's one of the issues that we'll have is unfortunately, you, know, you got Georgia, Florida, uh, Georgia, Auburn fans. You know, that's great. You know, we're in an interesting part of the country where you have we have fans from so many different colleges in this area. So it seems like we're always affected by some big game. But obviously, at Georgia, Florida, Georgia, Auburn, Auburn. Uh, LSU game. Unfortunately, unfortunately for us, we didn't play Saturday night. But you know, I want to encourage people that have been associated with Valdosta State in any way, shape, or form. You know, come come show your local pride, and you know that game will still be going on after this one's over a little bit. You'll have plenty of time to watch the second half, and if it's a close game, you'll see everything exciting. If it's not, you didn't miss anything. Exactly right. You know, it's uh, it's a shame that that's what's hurt division two football is is they have so many games on tv throughout the day and it's it's drawn away from fans coming and enjoying live football when they can sit at home and and watch um their school you know auburn you know there's a lot of auburn there's a lot of georgia fans that that are around this area that that would normally come to the game if if that wasn't on they could put their radio in their ear and listen to the game while they're there but uh you know that's that's what's hurt Division two football, not just here but across the country, it, it, the, the attendance is, is down because of uh, the, the way that they televise so many right now. But you know the, that's the one thing that North Alabama faced last week. They had a night game with West Georgia, and uh, they moved their game to the afternoon because of the Alabama LSU game because they knew everybody would be wanting to watch that and their attendance would be way down. So they moved it for that fact and uh, you know I for us if there's five people in the stands we're going to play just as hard as if there was 50,000 people in the stands but uh, you know we would certainly like to move the game number one it helps us uh, if you look at it uh, that's if we move it to say 12 o'clock that's 11 o'clock uh, in, in Alabama so they're they're on their clock they're playing at 11 o'clock their their time which means they've got to get up and eat their pregame meal about 7 o'clock. Uh, so you got to get up before that. So they're getting an early start on everything, and it kind of helps us out. I don't know why we don't use that more when we have these teams coming from another time zone over here. We need to use that to our advantage. Early on in the year, we can't do that because it is so hot, and we understand that. 
but the latter part of the year when you start to get all of these big rivalry games that are going to be on TV, let's move those games up and, and uh, you know, have an opportunity to play before the – I mean, usually the big games are at 3.30 and are at, at 7.30 or 8 o'clock at night. So if we can get them over before that time, I think our attendance will be a lot better. Now, is that the Gulf South Conference that dictates times for – no, no, the, all, the home teams always dictate the times. They always dictate, like, uh, I, don't, I don't have a choice in it. They, they just tell me this year playing at this time, this time, and this time. So, yes, sir, we're, we'll roll. <laughs> we'll so we'll roll from there. So uh, I don't know who, who determines the times. Uh, somebody, somebody picks the times or assigns the times. Uh, but that's, that's all given to me after the fact. That would seem, and I don't know, but it would seem like some of the ADs must come to some kind of agreement and, and well, negotiate. Well, yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of people that are involved. You right. know, obviously Residents. Herb Herb's involved in it. I'm sure the administration. Right. Uh, I think Russ Mast somehow is involved in it. Maybe John Trombetta with the Alumni Association. Uh, you know, there's there's several different people that, that make those decisions. So I, I don't know. Now, is there, getting this late to the game, is there any possibility that it could still be you would have time to move it, or is that oh, more yeah. wishful I mean, thinking? That it wouldn't, no, it wouldn't be a problem to move it uh, because they're coming in on Friday night anyway, and uh, so they'll be here. Uh, it's not too late to get in touch with the officials. It's not like they have flights that they come in. Right. They, they actually drive in. Uh, you know, it might end up being better if they don't show up. You know, who knows? <laughs> but, um, you know, if we can get – all we have to do is just get in touch with the, the – the crew chief or whoever's the head of the officials for, for this game, and, and he gets in touch with his crew, and they just say, look, yeah, the game's been bumped up two hours. We're going to start at 12 o'clock. Well, i tell you what. In the spirit of the season, we have a big election tomorrow. Let's uh, put that on the ballot and, and see what happens. I've got You got my vote. <laughs> I mean, right now I'll vote for it. and uh, I know that North Alabama would vote for it. They would be 100% behind it because right now they're going to – probably finish the game at, at 5.15 or so, and by the time you shower and get out of there at 6.30, and then they got a nine-hour ride back home, they're going to get home at 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. I think they would much rather get home at, at midnight or so as opposed to 2.30 in the morning. Just a, a round of applause if you think 12 o'clock would be a better time. to. <laughs> that was almost completely unanimous. Yes. It was unanimous. Except for Marcus. Marcus, did you not? Oh, okay. I was just yeah. Uh, Some people are eating and they couldn't clap. So but they were stomping their foot. Unanimous. They were yeah, stomping they, their foot. That was. They were nodding their head. All right. We talked about getting ready for the week. You guys, the coaching staff was able to kind of take a break as well yourself. You mentioned a chance to kind of do some cooking and, and watching some games on Saturday. Uh, how much did you watch and what did you learn? <laughs> Well, I learned that uh, Alabama and LSU are really good. <laughs> that was a good game. Yeah, that was a really good game. Uh, I actually went to the uh, the Valdosta uh, Colquitt County game Friday night. Congratulations to to Valdosta High School for winning the region championship. Boy, what a what a great football game that was. That was two very good football teams going at each other, and uh, so I enjoyed that on Friday night. And then I got up Saturday morning, and um, uh, I don't even remember what I did Saturday morning. I, I guess I just kind of sat around a little bit, and then I got a call sometime during the day that. Uh, that somebody was stuck, uh, that the car wouldn't start. Uh-uh. So I had to, I had to leave a football game that I was watching and drive across town and push a car, push a car off the hill and start it. And I uh, said, you know, it, it helps if you have gas in the car. That usually, <laughs> that usually starts the car a little bit better. Um, and then. Uh, Oh, I know what I did. I went to the fall festival. I went to the fall festival at uh, Westside Elementary School. Had a good time. Natalie and I uh, competed in a lot of different things. Got to ride a horse, and we did a. We, I forgot about that, Natalie. I'm sorry. And then, um, then I got to spend the I got to spend the afternoon with Allison. Allison is a huge football fan, and uh, Allison and I sat there and watched uh, football and. About 5 o'clock, she gave me the countdown, three hours, two hours, one hour. She was excited for the for the Alabama LSU game, so we watched that. And it was pretty interesting when I was at the, um, when I was at the fall festival, we got a call from, from Allison who did not go to the fall festival because she wanted to watch college game day on ESPN. <laughs> 
So she stayed home, and uh, I have a cousin that lives in Scottsboro, Alabama, that always comes down and cooks for our golf tournament. And his son was one of the guys that was featured on. If you if you watch College Game Day, he was the Army rep guy or something like that in the Alabama gear. And uh, so it was pretty interesting and exciting to, to see uh, my cousin's son, Jeffrey Tolleson, uh, was recognized on game day for all his achievements that he's done for the military. Now, how much are you able to sit back and just enjoy the game, and how much are you running, oh, that looks good, or that, you know, <laughs> boy, well, I'm, glad, I'm glad we're not preparing for that. Well, I, yeah, no <laughs> kidding. You know, when I saw those two teams play that night, wow. Uh, yeah. I do that a good bit. You know, I, I, I try to watch the game as a fan. It's, it's hard to do that sometimes. You watch little things that are going on in the game, and it's funny. Sometimes you try to guess what's going to happen. You know, are they going to blitz here and different things like that. But um, I, I've made a point to myself to just sit back and enjoy the game and, and, and not get caught up in, in, in trying to uh, – learn a lot of stuff. I just wanted to be a fan and enjoy the game, and, and I wasn't going to criticize coaches and what they did. I just wanted to enjoy it and, and, and basically just get away and not have to think about uh, what was coming up in the next week. Now, is that different if you know one of the guys coaching, like if you're watching Florida, <laughs> do you like kind of evaluate Will a little bit differently than <laughs> yeah. if it's two, co- you know, two groups that you've never really met? Yeah, it's funny. Uh, you know, I was... I, 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 pull, I always pull for Will. Will's a, a, a very good friend of mine. And, uh, you know, I could just see the the struggles that he was having in that ball game. But, you know, they, they were on a four-game losing streak, and they needed to win that ball game. And you could see the pressure that was mounting on him. And then when, when, when um, Vanderbilt scored late and they lined up for the onside kick and Florida recovered, it, it was like the Empire State Building was lifted off his shoulders. He, I mean, he almost went to his knee. He was so exhausted. But I was proud to see him win and get back on the winning track. And then, of course, Kirby Smart, who used to coach right. here, is now the defensive coordinator at Alabama. Alabama. And it's funny, we've got two former players, Gordon Steele and Russ Calloway, uh, that both played on our football team last year. One was a center, one was a quarterback. One's at LSU and one's at, at Alabama. So uh, it was pretty interesting. Those two guys uh, were going at each other on, on Saturday night in, in that ball game. And, uh, you know, so you know, I, I know a lot of guys in, in the coaching profession now, and, and you, pull for, you pull for them, and you, know, you, you find yourself pulling a lot for the underdogs. And uh, I'll have to admit, I was pulling very hard for Steve Spurrier in, in South Carolina. I just, you know, I'm a, I was a big South Carolina fan on Saturday night. Unfortunately, they didn't win, so I think everybody knows why I pulled for South Carolina. But um, it's, it, it was fun to just sit back and and, and watch football uh, without having to worry about having a game later that night or worrying about what did we do wrong. In, in our game earlier in the day and different things like that, it, it was fun to just sit back and enjoy that. I have to ask you, were you I know you're not a big Georgia fan, but did you have, were you able to see the highlight of the kid that had to jump over the xylophones and landed in the hedges and it took like three guys to pull him out? <laughs> no, I didn't see that. Yeah, there was a play, he caught a touchdown and momentum took him to the sideline and they had the xylophones there, I get Glockenspiels or whatever they call them. But they were right there, and he had to kind of jump over them instead of running over them. <laughs> and he actually got wedged into the hedges, and it took like three or four guys to wow. come in and pull him out. So I, I if you get a chance to look at that clip, maybe Allison can pull up the clip on YouTube or something. But, yeah, that's a pretty funny pretty funny clip. Now, with Allison, if she's getting that much uh, lead time with uh, preparing for the game, when is she going to be in the film room with you? Well, like on the – what? Remember the Titans or whatever? Was that the movie where the little girl was in there with the dad? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it's it's funny. I, I was very, very, uh, last Sunday after we lost to, to West Georgia, I was uh, very quiet and wasn't saying a whole bunch. And she wakes up and she comes out. And I had just done our TV show and doing all the highlights. And I came back and I was just sitting around and, and I had to go back in that afternoon to watch the thing with, with our players and, and the first thing she says is, she, "Now you got to beat North Alabama." You know, so she had already put <laughs> that one behind on. us, and she was she was looking ahead. So uh, she she's not a big North Alabama fan. Did you did you talk to Larry again about the purple and the you know how ironic it was that he was here the week before? I did the thank, purple kind of. I did thank him for for not coming in wearing purple. <laughs> he was 
He was wearing blue jeans and a light blue shirt, so I was very pleased to see him not wearing the purple. But uh, for all of you that, uh, that, that know Larry and care about Larry, he's doing very, very good. He's really excited about his opportunity that he has now, and um, it was great for him to come back. He walked back in the locker room and, and talked to a lot of our players, and I know he, he gave them a huge uh, pep talk. It was kind of a surprise. I knew they were off, but I didn't expect him to come into the office, so it was great to see him and sit down and talk with him. And um, you know, it, it was it was good for him to come in and be with our guys and kind of kind of give them a, a little spark and everything. So I didn't realize this. They they watched the film on Tuesday, I think he said, or Monday or Tuesday, and then when they when they don't have a game, they're off the rest of the week. So they have a lot of time off. So he flew in and he went up and spent a lot of time with his family up in Tifton. And then he was heading back, and they're getting ready for their game this week. I think they play the Packers. They play the Packers on Monday night. If you're a Larry Dean fan, you can watch that on Monday night football. So week yeah, tonight. Yeah, he, he was kind of saying that uh, that he was hoping the Packers were going to win on Sunday because they wanted to be the first team to knock the Packers off. Well, there you go. <laughs> well, you know, I was I was talking to your sister. You know, this is really the first chance that he's had to play NFL football going into Lambeau Field. I'm That's sure, right. You know, he'll be like, wow, this is. This is a lot different than the Little Bo Peep room. <laughs> yeah, and it's going to be a lot colder, too. Well, actually, you know, yesterday it was, it was warmer in Green Bay at game time than it was in San Diego where they were playing. Wow. It was actually five that. degrees warmer in Green Bay at kickoff. Than That'll change in a hurry. Yeah, that, that's true. <laughs> One little rainstorm and it's down in the 20s. Uh-huh. All right, we'll take our second break. When we come back, we'll take a look at the regional rankings and how that plays out as we look forward to heading into the playoffs. We'll be back with more from the David Dean Coaches Show, live from Austin's Cattle Company. Thank you to our title sponsors, Southeastern Federal Credit Union. Also, thank you to Peaceway Counseling and Mediation, KFC, Budweiser, Griner Nissan, Gerard and Jewelers, Blanton and Griffin Insurance, Valdosta Lighting, Smitty's Package Store, and Georgia Print Co. We'll be back with more on Rock 108. There is absolutely nothing better than Friday night football in South Georgia. Don't you love it? Some of the nation's most elite players crashing helmets and blitzing the field to utterly, totally dominate their opponent is so relaxing. The sight and sound of tens of thousands of rabid fans screaming with every snap will rumble your soul. And don't even get me started on those power ballads during the halftime show. Man, it doesn't get any better. And to all of the opposing teams and their visiting fans, we love you, but you're going down. This is what we do, and this is how we roll. Tradition is here, and the future is now. It's Friday night football, folks. The trumpets are sounding. The air is thick. And victory is just four guaranteed action-packed quarters away. Brought to you by Southeastern Federal Credit Union, a very proud sponsor of South Georgia football. Smitty's Package Store is ready for Blazer football. Smitty's was voted the number one liquor store in South Georgia, and they have everything that you need for the weekend, including ice-cold beer, wine, and liquor. Plus, you can pick up a cooler, a bag of ice, a nice cigar, and even the lime for your Corona. As we cheer our Blazers on, don't forget to be safe. Make sure that you have a designated driver and that you drink responsibly. All good times begin at Smitty's, and go Blazers. Peaceway Counseling and Mediation Service. Services Incorporated has diligently served Valdosta and the surrounding communities since 2006 and is now offering DUI school. If you or someone you know is in need of DUI school, Peaceway Counseling can help. Peaceway Counselors pride themselves on integrity, commitment, and professionalism and now provide a variety of services including marital counseling, substance abuse treatment, individual and family therapy, anger management, domestic violence, and DUI classes. Call today at 333-2351 or visit PeacewayCMS.com. Peaceway Counseling and Mediation Services, helping to put the pieces together. It's a a world of endless meetings, a place where the copiers always jamming and cubicle dwellers always dream of better digs. Yeah, this is the typical American office, and come five o'clock, this is America's beer, Budweiser. It's brewed with the finest natural ingredients for the perfect combination of flavor and refreshment. Budweiser, the great American style lager. Budweiser beer, Anheuser Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. Please drink responsibly. Hey, what do you have? Ah, it's the what'll you have moment. You want a light beer, right? But you also want real beer taste. Michelob Ultra. Smooth, refreshing, perfect taste. 95 calories and 2.6 grams of carbs. That's the smart choice. So what will you have? Yeah! 
Yeah, a round of Michelob Ultra. Mick Ultra, you got it. Live life to the ultra. Please drink responsibly. 2009 Anheuser-Busch Incorporated Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. 95 calories, 2.6 grams carbs, 0.6 grams protein, and 0 grams fat for 12 ounces. It's Monday night. Let's talk. Let's to cut. You're listening to the David Dean Coaches Show on Rock 108. Rock 108. Welcome back to the David Dean Coaches Show, live from Austin's Cattle Company. Thank you to our title sponsor, Southeastern Federal Credit Union. Also, thank you to Peaceway Counseling and Mediation, KFC, Budweiser, Griner Nissan, Girardin Jewelers, Blanton and Griffin Insurance, Valdosta Lighting, Smitty's Package Sawyer, and Georgia Print Co. Now let's go back to David Schmidt and head coach, David Dean. I know you don't have a, a chance to really look over rankings and, and national rankings before we get into the regional rankings, but it's been a very interesting year in the fact that other than really Delta State, the teams have been changing positions very regularly uh, throughout the, the top 25, and I think six or seven, maybe even more than that, about eight teams, ranked teams lost last week, including a number two uh, Pittsburgh State, the number three Northwest Missouri teams that we're familiar with. So it's really been a season where, you know, you've seen teams, no one's able to just dominate. And again, even again, Delta State with the best record, but you, know, you guys put a challenge to them, and, and it's not like they're invincible. Um, I think it's a good omen, other than the fact that you know talent will win the game. But I think it's a good omen that that North Alabama landed at 13 this week. <laughs> oh, um, I didn't realize that. Uh, but yeah, that is good. I, I wish they'd I wish they'd be in the top 10. I well, would like to knock off a top 10 team. Uh, yeah, that, I mean, again, the, the higher up ranked, the, the better. But now, speaking of the the, the rankings that matter uh, in the super region to regional rankings. Uh, Delta State and Mars Hill held serve. Delta State had a seemingly somewhat close game against West Alabama, but when you kind of broke it down and looked at it, uh, West Alabama really put a push on in the fourth quarter and kind of made that score look a little bit better than the, the contest was overall. Mars Hill, I think they had no problem. Uh, sitting at number three now, jumping up a couple spots, is North Greenville, again, one of those teams that's from the independent, but they really put a, a hurting on Wingate. So they kind of made, I think they made a statement with that game saying, you know, they're willing to compete with the guys in this region. I'm, I'm thinking you probably don't know very much about them based on their history of not really being in the top rank. But no, we saw them play earlier in the year against Newberry. They, they played the uh, Newberry the week before we played them. And uh, I know they have an outstanding quarterback that transferred from uh, Clemson University, and evidently he's playing very well. He was he was playing good at that time, and I'm sure he's gotten better and better as the season has gone on. All right, West Alabama dropped from number three to number four. Um, again, close game with Delta State, but they were unable to pull it off, uh, which actually dropped North Alabama down to five. Valdosta State stayed at number six. Again, I think another testimony to how good the schedule, how strong the schedule was. And then sitting at number seven is Albany State. From this, I mean, they may say they put it through a formula and then it falls out the way it does, but looking at this, I think it's definitely set up. Obviously, they're going to say the winner of North, Valdosta, uh, North Alabama, Valdosta State, is probably going to sit at number five. Mm-hmm. Albany State then will be able to, the, Albany State's going to take six either yes. way, yeah. but this would give them a chance to actually achieve number six instead of getting placed at number six. Right. So, uh, and then again, two more. Um, Gulf South Conference games. I mean, I guess West Alabama is still vulnerable if they were to lose, but I don't anticipate that being a, a, a challenge, but you never know in this season. So, again, things are laid out that it seems like a win and you're in, uh, but North Alabama knows that too, so it's not like they're coming in thinking, oh, we've got it made and we don't have to play. Right. So that definitely adds uh, be a lot different, I think, possibly, if they're sitting at number two or number one and there's not that same right. sense of pending urgency and I think maybe even a little bit more from them the pressure because you talk about a, a team that is just filled with with recruits from you know all over the country that <laughs> that have experience at the division one level sure and it seems like they really kind of feel this need to kind of show that they belong even though they struggle to dominate right well they they've got a very good football team they uh, they kind of let one slip away from Delta State. The Delta State did exactly what they've done to everybody. They just the last part of the game they find a way to win, and that's what they did against North Alabama. And then going back and, and watching the West Alabama North Alabama game, and, and not, not to take anything away from West Alabama, but they were very very fortunate to beat North Alabama. They had a long pass that the quarterback just threw the ball up, and his prayer was answered, where they scored a touchdown, and then. They dropped a punt that set up another score, so they got behind 14 to nothing very quickly. And um, 
then I think they got a field goal right before the half, and it was like 17 to six at the half, and then. North Alabama came out on fire in the second half and, and then made a couple mistakes that allowed West Alabama to win the game at the end. And, and again, West Alabama is a good football team, uh, but they were very fortunate to, to beat North Alabama at that time. And, uh, you know, I said today at the lunch and just watching them on film, I still think North Alabama is the best football team that we faced all year long. Uh, I think they're better than Delta, uh, and I think they're better than West Alabama. So, you know, we've got our hands full, but what's really frustrating to me is when you look at that. Delta State plays West Georgia, so they're, they're going to remain number one, and they probably would even if they lost. Uh, Mars Hill plays, I don't know who they play, somebody, maybe Catawba or somebody like that. Um, they play Carson Newman. Carson Newman. Carson Newman's struggling this year. So the, the thing about Mars Hill, they beat North Greenville. And then they also beat who's down here at number eight, Lenore Ryan. So they're probably not going to move out of that. North Greenville plays an NAI school, so they're not going to move. West Alabama, North Alabama, and Valdosta State are four, five, and six. Well, one of these two, North Alabama and Valdosta State, is going to get knocked out after Saturday. Um, if we beat North Alabama, will we jump ahead of West Alabama because we beat them head to head? So now we go to four and they go to five. Albany moves to six. Uh, if North Alabama beats us, it'll probably stay exactly the same, and Albany replaces us at number six. Down here, seven, Lenore, Ryan, Morehouse at eight. You know, all those guys, they're basically out of it, it the way that I look at it right now. But what's frustrating is if that's the case, and let's say we beat North Alabama and they jump us up to number four and, and bump West Alabama down to number five, we would play West Alabama in the first round here. If we win that game, we go to Delta State. So they take the three Gulf South Conference teams and put them together, knock each other out. Why can't we play a North Greenville or a Mars Hill? Why don't they separate those things? That's, that's what's frustrating to me, and this is going to be the second straight year that they've done that. Uh, I wouldn't care if they jumped Albany State ahead of us if it gave us an opportunity to play somebody like a North Greenville or a Mars Hill. That's what I would rather do. And, and again, that it seems like they're just setting up this Gulf South Conference tournament. And you got you have four teams right now sitting in the top six. So I'm sure the other conferences and the, and the people, the powers to be, obviously they can't like that because no. you know. And so as I say, to, to me, to think that this is simply just a mathematical equation and it falls out, and, and the next thing you know, oh, there's the list. It, it just no. doesn't seem like it flows no. that way. It, it doesn't go that way. It, uh, it, it, it's a huge, huge. I think for the third straight year, it would be the, a huge coincidence that it would take place that way. I mean, if you think about it, in 2007, uh, in the in the first round of the playoffs, we were off, and then we played Catawba, and then had to play North Alabama. That's fine. I, I can live with that because two Gulf South Conference teams came through. Well, then when we went to 2008, we opened up in the first round of the playoffs with North Alabama. 2010, we open up with North Alabama. Both of those, if we win, we go to Delta. You know, it, so now you're really looking for four straight years. This is exactly the same way they do it. That's not coincidence. Somebody's putting that together to to set it up that only one Gulf South Conference team can make it uh, to the to the regional final. And again, I think from a, sta- a fan standpoint, you for the for the sake of the brand, you would like to see those matchups that aren't happening all the time. Well, you know, that's why people like interleague play in baseball. Sure. And, and, you know, you and that's why they encourage it in, in Division II football. They encourage you to play teams in your region. So we go out and we play Newberry, we play Albany, we play Wingate. You know, we try to play Carson Newman and all these other teams. Well, then you get to the playoffs and they don't do it. Right. You know, so they, they don't reward you. They, they turn around and you got to play exactly the same team. And, you know, that's not fair to West Alabama to have to turn around and play us again. It's not fair for us to have to turn around and play Delta again. Right. Let's play somebody else. Let's, let, that, that's, what, that's, that's why you play the regular season to position yourself to the playoffs so you can play somebody outside of your conference. All right, Coach, uh, let's turn it over to West there and let's see what he has to Get us kicked off looking ahead to North Alabama specifically. Well, Coach, first of all, looking at the uh, at Florida State University at Florence. <laughs> That's about the truth. Um, 28, I went through their roster today, 28 D1 transfers. 
Mm-hmm. Seventeen of them are seniors. Eight of them from Florida State. Right. Go through our roster, and unless I'm badly mistaken, we have five D1 transfers, only one senior, and one of those from Florida State. Now, before we get into some more comparisons, and I, I, and I may be wrong there about the, the one from Florida State, just when I was looking through some things, how ethical is it for the NCAA Division II to continue to allow certain schools to go out and recruit D1 players like they do? Well, I think, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of setting me up here, but I'm, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump on it because you're doing it. Um, Division II has a thing that they put out there and if you watch any t- any division two football game they always have this thing it says i chose division two well why did you choose division two did you choose it out of high school or did you choose it because that's the only place else you have to go and i think right now there's some schools across the country that have that they're they're taking guys in there because they have nowhere else to go and i think that's wrong if they're going to do this and continue to do it and, and i have no problem with it because you know, you look at guys like Dusty Bonner, who came in was a great football player for us, and Carlos Johnson, who transferred in from Temple, and Michael Greer, who played wide receiver for us. You know, we've had several guys that have transferred in like that, but not 28 at one time. If you're going to do that, I think you need to limit the number that you have, because what you're doing is you're taking away the opportunity for a lot of guys at Lowndes, Valdosta, Colquitt, you know, that aren't Division One players to have an opportunity to go play Division Two football, and they're good enough to pl- go play Division Two football, but they're not ha- not they're not getting that opportunity because all these coaches are saving back, saying, "Well, I'm going to wait and see what happens at the Division One level, and we'll go scoop this guy up." Well, now you've got a bunch of kids that have earned the right to play Division Two football that aren't getting scholarships, not having an opportunity to have their education paid for, and I don't think that's fair. All right, Coach, with that said, let's look at that Division One school that's coming in here Saturday <laughs> to play to play our Division Two school. I went through today and uh, wrote down to look at all the stats compared, you know, compared head to head. We beat West Georgia. I mean, we lost to West Georgia. They beat West Georgia. We beat West Alabama. They lost to West Alabama. We both lost to Delta State. So let's look at statistics because you know I love statistics. <laughs> Total offense. We, we, we've had a total of 1,281 yards of total offense against those three opponents. University of North Alabama has had 1,286 yards. We've given up 1,054 yards to those opponents. They've given up 1,058 yards. Our D1 school is only one yard less than what that D1 school is, Coach. So it tells me our players, even though they are legitimate D2 players, are just as good, just as just as coached, just as ready to go out and play as that Division One school that's coming down here on Saturday. Well, I appreciate you saying that, and, and it's uh, uh, you know to me it's it's. We would take a Division One transfer, and we have. And, and I don't know who uh, the only senior that we have that is a transfer is Scott Fambro, and he was he transferred from Coastal Carolina. So I don't know who the, I'm trying to think of who the Florida State guy was. Uh, no, I take that back. We got two. Uh, Trey Herndon uh, played at Vanderbilt, graduated from Vanderbilt, and had one year of eligibility left. So we've actually got two seniors on our team that um, that have transferred in from a Division One school, but. To me, I think the, the way that you build a program is to bring high school kids in and, and, and build them up and, and get them used to uh, their program, to your program, and they get used to all these other players. But, you know, I know just looking at it from uh, as an offensive coach, looking at them on defense, if you look at them, they have 11 starters. Of the 11 starters that they have, all 11 are seniors. So they lose their entire defense after this ball game. And then five more are five more backups are seniors also. So 16 of their 22 too deep on defense are seniors, and eight of those 11 are Division One transfers, and the two of the other three are junior college transfers. So at the most, they have been there for two years, and then they have one that's a defensive end that played as a 
freshman and, and worked his way all the way up to being a, a senior starter. So really 10 of their 12 have only been there for one, maybe two years. And, you know, I, I will give Terry Bowden a lot of credit. Uh, he does a great job of coaching those type guys and, and get them prepared to play. Uh, it would be tough for us to do that uh, just because of, of the way that we like to run our program. I'm not saying that he's doing it the wrong way. It's just not the way that Valdosta State wants to do it. We want to do it another way. And if it means having to line up against Division One guys, so be it. We'll, we'll line up and we're going to go toe-to-toe against them. And we beat them last year in the regular season. They got us in the playoffs. So hopefully we'll have an opportunity to beat them this year, which, we, which is what we consider the playoffs. Hopefully we'll beat them in the playoffs and, um, you know, in their season this year because they've done it to us for the last two years. All right, Coach, we'll take our final break. When we come back, a last look ahead to Saturday's game, North Alabama. We'll be back with more from the David Dean Coaches Show, live from Austin's Cattle Company. Thank you to our title sponsor, Southeastern Federal Credit Union. Also, thank you to Peaceway Counseling and Mediation, KFC, Budweiser, Griner Nissan, Gerard and Jewelers, Blanton and Griffin Insurance, Valdosta Lighting, Smitty's Package Store, and Georgia Print Co. We'll be back with more on Rock 108. There is absolutely nothing better than Friday night football in South Georgia. Don't you love it? Some of the nation's most elite players crashing helmets and blitzing the field to utterly, totally dominate their opponent is so relaxing. The sight and sound of tens of thousands of rabid fans screaming with every snap will rumble your soul. And don't even get me started on those power ballads during the halftime show. Man, it doesn't get any better. And to all of the opposing teams and their visiting fans, we love you, but you're going down. This is what we do, and this is how we roll. Tradition is here, and the future is now. It's Friday night football, folks. The trumpets are sounding. The air is thick. And victory is just four guaranteed action-packed quarters away. Brought to you by Southeastern Federal Credit Union, a very proud sponsor of South Georgia football. Experience the difference of Griner Nissan, home of the lifetime warranty. For over 50 years, customers in South Georgia and North Florida have relied on Griner for their automotive needs. Griner continues to offer the best possible prices and service that keeps you coming back. After all, relationships are what the difference is all about. Visit Griner Nissan on Inner Perimeter Road in Valdosta and online at GrinerNissan.com. Griner Nissan, a proud sponsor of the VSU Blazers and the David Dean Coaches Show. Valdosta Lighting Center, located at 418 Northside Drive, has been serving homeowners and businesses in Valdosta and the surrounding areas since 1974. They have a 14,000 square foot facility and offer the finest lighting with over 200 residential, commercial, and industrial lines to choose from. Valdosta Lighting Center's staff has over 125 years combined experience. They offer scheduled, in-house, or on-site consultations as well as after-hours appointments for your convenience. Call Valdosta Lighting Center at 247-1526 or visit Visit them online at ValdostaLining.com. There's a reason our KFC Famous Bowl is famous. Okay, five reasons. Mashed potatoes, sweet corn, gravy, the world's best chicken, and a three-cheese blend. Layered together for what might be the world's best-tasting full meal. How could our cooks make that recipe even more famous? We put bacon on it. Wow, another one for the Colonel. The new KFC Cheesy Bacon Bowl. Try it now for just $3.99. Today is a KFC day. Today tastes so good. Limited time offer at participating KFC restaurants. Prices may vary tax extra. Hey, this is head football coach David Dean of your VSU Blazers. Join us Monday night at Austin's Cattle Company for the David Dean Coaches Show live from 7 to 8 p.m. We will break down the previous week's game and get you ready for the upcoming game with my coaching staff and David Smith. For more information on sponsoring the show, please call your local Black Crow Media Sales representative at 244-8642. We look forward to seeing you at Austin's Cattle Company starting August the 29th. The 2011 David Dean Coaches Show is brought to you by Southeastern Federal Credit Union, Peaceway Counseling and Mediation, Griner Nissan, Gerard and Jewelers, Blanton and Griffin, Feldosta Lighting, Smitty's Package Store, KFC, and Budweiser. The David Dean Coaches Show. Find it here every Monday night, all season long, on Rock 108.
Welcome back to the David Dean Coaches Show, live from Austin's Cattle Company. Thank you to our title sponsor, Southeastern Federal Credit Union. Also, thank you to Peaceway Counseling and Mediation, KFC, Budweiser, Griner Nissan, Gerard and Jewelers, Blanton and Griffin Insurance, Valdosta Lighting, Smitty's Package Store, and Georgia Print Co. Now let's go back to David Schmidt and head coach, David Dean. We get too deep into it. We want to make sure everybody knows. As of now, with the game kicking off at 2 o'clock, that means the Blazer walk would be at 12.30. And Correct. The same traditions continue on. Right. And, and again, maybe maybe we can get the, the game changed. That would be fun. If that were to happen, Blazer walk hour and a half before game time. So just shift accordingly, and hopefully by this time you have turned back your clock so you're back and you're in sync with everything. <laughs> it's all uh, depending on Vice President Kellner here. Yes. And Rob, Rob, Rob pull this, I can tell he's already working on it. Yeah. It's, See the wheels the are turning. The wheels are turning. wheels are turning. Um, <laughs> You know, I'm sure I don't. I mean, I don't know if they get radio in Alabama. So go ahead and tell us what you're going to do. To, what 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 are all the secret plays and the big, the big secrets that uh, just, just between us, you guys <laughs> promise to keep it. We we honestly did not have any secret plays. We're just going to try and line up and uh, and go nose to nose with them and uh, beat them at the game of football. Uh, out execute them. Out hustle them. Out hit them. Be more physical than they are. And uh, ultimately, just play great defense, great offense, great special teams, and hope that it's good enough to give us a victory and uh, put us in the playoffs and find out who we play from there. And it is what it is. Yeah, sure. And it is what it is about bringing people in. But I would th- I have to thank again from your philosophy of bringing people in from their their freshman year, getting involved. We kind of hit on this during the commercial. You know, they have the pressure of showing that they were good enough to be in Division One. So they obviously, if they struggle in Division Two games, then that just brings about more uh, more criticism to them. I'm sure in their in their in their hometown on their campus. You guys have the Rudys and the and the Rocky Balboas <laughs> of the football league, and it, it has to be a little bit special when you do. Like last year, you do knock them off, and and the other games that you played, big games where you you know. It's it's about heart and about execution and, and size and, and sure. where someone thought you should have played really kind of falls by the wayside once the whistle blows. Well, our guys kind of have a chip on their shoulder, you know, because a lot of them feel like that they should be playing Division One football, so now they have an opportunity to play Division One competition. So here we go. You know, let's line up and let's go toe-to-toe with them and, and find out if we are good enough to, to beat those guys. But, uh uh, you know, the, the, we can't get caught up in where they're from. And, you know, I know it's. we had a funny story. I was going through the, the personnel with our offense the other day, and we talked about Janoris Jenkins. Janoris Jenkins was an all-SEC player at Florida. He's now playing corner at, at the University of North Alabama. Actually projected as the number one pick. Yeah, he's the number one pick in the, in the NFL draft for next year. And You know, I was talking about, uh, talking about him a little bit. And Troy Braswell, who had a great game last week, Lowndes High, he walks up to me, he goes, Coach, you know, I've been a Florida, I've been a Florida fan ever since I grew up. Janoris Jenkins is one of my heroes. <laughs> I said, well, that's not good. <laughs> you can't have him as your hero. I said, well, why don't you run over your hero one time? So, you know, our guys, a lot of our guys see them play uh, like a Janoris Jenkins and uh, Marcus Douthat, who's a linebacker that played at the University of Georgia, is their middle linebacker. Um, you know, they see all those guys play, and now they're going to have an opportunity to play against them. But it's game on. Uh, this one is for uh, – definitely this is a playoff game. Before the playoffs, I encourage anybody, again, that you've been associated with Valdosta State, come on out, cheer them on, uh, win, lose, or draw. It was, uh, you know, it's a great atmosphere to be involved in, a great rivalry. But uh, we'll be back next week uh, talking about the win and talking about who we face in the playoffs. Good luck, which is just a matter of how much, not if or when, but how much the, the final score dictates how much you won by. But hopefully everybody's behind you. We'll be back next week, and we'll talk about the victory over North Alabama. Sounds good. This has been a special presentation of the David Dean Coaches Show from Austin's Cattle Company. Thank you to our title sponsor, Southeastern Federal Credit Union. Also, thank you to Peaceway Counseling and Mediation, KFC, Budweiser, Griner Nissan, Gerard and Jewelers, Blanton and Griffin Insurance, Valdosta Lighting, Smitty's Package Store, and Georgia Print Co. A podcast of this event will be available at ValdostaToday.com. Once again, this has been the David Dean Coaches Show, live from Austin's Cattle Company on Rock 108.